Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 18th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. So if you installed macOS 11 Big Sur, you probably noticed that some network security software like Little Snitch, for example, had to be updated. This software is no longer able to use kernel modules in order to intercept network traffic. Instead, Apple made available a special API, the Network Extension API, that is supposed to be used to inspect network traffic and the latest version of Little Snitch, Little Snitch 5, is taking advantage of uh, this API. So the switch to the API was mandated by Apple by removing the ability to load kernel modules. And in the end, it looked all fine. We now have a nice API to inspect network traffic. But uh, the side effect of this is that Apple exempted some of its own software from inspection. So all you have to do is you have to find an Apple application that is in this content filter exclusion list, as they call it, pick a back traffic on it, and you have a nice covered channel that bypasses any kind of third party filtering products. Now, Patrick Wardle has been communicating with Apple about this problem. He has filed a vulnerability report about this, but this hasn't been addressed in the final release of macOS 11. So now he tweeted a couple of proof of concept exploits that show how he was able to exfiltrate data, essentially set up a command control channel by piggybacking traffic on software that is in Apple's content filter exclusion list. Apple is kind of typical, has not released any comments about this. Aside from a couple of tweets from Patrick Wardle, uh, there are no additional details, so I don't think he has released any tools at this point. And I'm using Little Snitcher as an example. Uh, This affects any other tool that sort of attempts to inspect uh, outbound network connections and restrict them, like, for example, also Patrick Wardle's own Lulu, which he sort of used in his uh, demos. And well, we got a second uh, story here uh, dealing with Apple, and that's sort of a little bit the fallout of uh, these online certificate status protocol or OCSP issues that users experienced late last week. So the problem here was whenever you open an application, the operating system will verify the certificate that was used to sign this application. This is, of course, a single point of failure, as people noticed on Thursday. And uh, with that, uh, people also well questioned the privacy impact of this as OCSP by design is not actually encrypted. It looks like in response to this incident, Apple has updated its document that describes how to open files safely on macOS uh, with a couple of notes of future improvements uh, they're working on. First of all, uh, they're trying to move to an encrypted protocol. They also try to improve uh, the protection against server failure and they are going to add an option that allows users to completely opt out of these protections. And Cisco today released an update for the Cisco Security Manager, which fixes a number of vulnerabilities, including one critical path traversal vulnerability. But apparently, well, uh, this isn't the entire story. A security researcher with a code white uh, security uh, red teaming company did publish a GitHub gist with a list of vulnerabilities that Cisco was informed about back in mid-July. And well, uh, that Cisco has patched in uh, recent releases, but uh, that a apparently were never really sort of publicly announced. The problem here is that uh, these are all a pre-authentication remote code execution vulnerabilities. So certainly very severe vulnerabilities. 
the just being published uh, earlier today, does list proof of concept exploits for uh, these vulnerabilities. So make sure that your Cisco security manager is up to date and well, if possible, also not exposed uh, to the internet. Well, that's it for today. And just sort of my semi-regular reminder, if you like this podcast, uh, please you know, tell your friends about it or uh, give us a good review on whatever podcasting platform you use uh, to listen uh, to this podcast. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.